in pursuing the people that have stood up to them. This isn't black and white. It's not footballification. Nobody's perfect by any stretch of the imagination. But my goodness me, it's a national embarrassment, isn't it? Let's just look at the papers. Daily Express, all out war. Now Harry says, Palace played dirty games. Ooh. Uh, the sun got... Let's have a look at the sun. Sussex, lies and videotape. It, it, it's unhinged, this. Get the popcorn in, folks. Daily Star, once again, doing all right, actually. Daily Mirror, um, probably the only popular. The Mirror and the Star, don't go too bonkers on this. Fact or fantasy? Harry and Meghan in New Storm over Netflix show. <sighs> Daily Mail. Fury at Sussex's next Netflix claim of war on Meghan. Um, and on it goes. And on and on and on and on. So if you don't understand the point that I'm making, that's my fault. Let me make it absolutely crystal clear. It is palpably ridiculous for an organ to claim that it wants people to receive less attention while giving them more attention than they currently give to anybody else on the planet. Look at the mail, right? Netflix versus Riyadh, page one. Fury at Sussex's Netflix claim. Page two, the whole thing is one long whinge. There's even commentary from Sarah Vine claiming that they're gaslighting the entire nation. Uh, she used to be married to Michael Gove, of course, during coronavirus, so she probably knows a little bit about gaslighting. Page four and five, once again, Harry is attempting to cloak himself and Meghan with Diana's legacy. How dare he reference his mother? Huh, who does he think he is? Talk Pages seven and eight and nine, eight and nine, the surprising reality behind... I mean, that is eight pages, is it? How, how utterly crackers is it to say that these people are doing something that you disapprove of? But here's eight pages of coverage. So, according to the Daily Mail, that, that, that is... Far and away, the most important thing happening in this country at the moment is a television programme on Thursday featuring two people that they claim don't deserve your attention or affection. Eight pages. Eight pages without mentioning the rail strike, without mentioning the uh, food supply threats, without mentioning GPs, without mentioning the H NHS. I mean, it's actually breathtaking. It might be seven pages. I seem to have torn one of them out, probably in a fit of fury. So, that's that's not... Up for debate, is it? Why do they keep writing about these people that they hold in such low regard? Why don't they just ignore them? Because you see the phrase is attention-seeking. They're attention-seeking parasites. Here's eight pages of undiluted attention. You can see that that's insane, right? Even if you've got a, a, a really bad case of the, of the four-lot tuggers. So... The business model is to make you hate them. If, if they ignored them, you wouldn't hate them. If they reported them fairly, you wouldn't hate them. The business model is to make you hate them. They count how many copies they sell, according to front pages. Not long after I left the Daily Express, the new owner established that if they put Diana Princess of Wales on the front page, they sold ten or 20,000 more copies than they did on any other day. So they put any old toot on the front page if it contained even a passing reference to Diana Princess of Wales, Prince Harry's mum, of course. And so they know that the bitter, angry, hateful denizens of Middle England who like to think of themselves as patriotic and Christian, your Daily Mail reading matrons, they know. Eight pages of vitriol and bile directed at Diana's son and his wife. That is great guns. That is jackpot. That is a win. And so my question for you today is this. Why is it so easy to make you hate them, given that every single thing you know about them has come from the people telling you to hate them?